What's up guys? Welcome to another tutorial Linux video in the basic sysadmin series. This is part two of the processes. So I guess that's a mini series. I don't know. Section. Uh, it's the second section of the processes topic. Processes are absolutely critical to understand. So we're delving in to pretty geeky depth level here. Um, if you really understand this, this is basically how everything happens on Linux. This is how work gets done on the system. So if you haven't seen the previous video, which is sort of the introduction to processes, go ahead and watch that. This is going to be delving into signals, which is how processes communicate with each other. So signals can be sent by the kernel when a process does something really bad, like divide by zero or something horrible. They're also sent to processes to notify the parent process of, for example, a child processes exit or death, or to notify them that hardware things are ready, the CD-ROM drive that a process is trying to read from is ready, or something else like that. So signals are really how processes communicate information about themselves to each other and to the kernel, and how the kernel communicates information about the state of the system and the state of the hardware to processes. So signals, you can see in the back here, I, the man page is a little bit hard to read, so I'm just pulling this up on a web page. Here's a list of a lot of the different signals. I think there's a few more than, oh, there they are. But you can see, these are basically a lot of the important things that someone, uh, some process would have to know about, like, hey, you've been interrupted from the keyboard. Uh, well, this one <laughs> isn't so much a signal to a process. It's uh, This is actually a signal more, I think, to the kernel, because this... Uh, kill nine uh, murders a process ruthlessly without asking that process to stop. So you would like use this on a process that hasn't responded to a sig term, the term or terminate. So terminate is a signal to this from you to the process saying, "Hey, dude, could you please shut down now?" And if a process is hanging or doing something ridiculous or not listening to you, you can kill it by giving it kill nine and the kernel will just shut it off without any input from the process. But most of these processes can be either blocked or ignored or handled by different processes. So handler functions inside of a process can say, hey, if we get the signal, whatever, user defined two, we're going to run this code. And so that this signal will be handled inside of the process. If a process has a good reason or sometimes without a good reason, a signal can be ignored or blocked. For example, like I said before, the term signal, that's blockable. I mean, you can send a terminate command to a process and the process can just choose not to listen. Common things that you'll need, um, you can get a kill is the command that we use to send process signals to processes. It's named kill because the most likely thing you're going to be doing is sending the kill process. If you do kill with the option L, you'll get a list of the different processes and their corresponding numbers. And the way you use it is, for example, if we say top, I know Firefox is going to be somewhere near the top here. Oh, not yet. Wow. Let's, oops, let's, uh, find Firefox. So you can see Firefox is running uh, here. This second one, if you're grepping for processes in, in PS, you'll often, you'll, well, you'll always see two things. One, which is the process that's been launched looking for the process using your search term. And the other is the actual process. So get used to seeing two of everything. So you can see this is the Firefox process. It's got the ID 2196. And if we want to kill it, you can see it in the background. This, this is implied. Kill automatically tries a kill 15 if you don't specify something. If you do specify something, like die immediately, this is dangerous. I mean, it might, you know, damage some stuff. The process doesn't have time to shut down. So it'll likely files open. It'll, you know, use this with caution, really, only when a 
the signal isn't uh, a process isn't behaving. But generally, kill 15, terminate, sig term is what you want to be sending. So that's the default. We'll just use kill 2196. That's the PID, the process ID. And there you go. Firefox shuts down. Now there's some other signals such as interrupt, which is generally if I do a command C here, this thing is running, I do command C, that's an interrupt. Um, I think I can uh, halt or stop a process with command Z, but we'll talk about stopping and restarting processes and changing their priority or running them in the background later. So some really useful things that you can do just with kill or variations on that. If we have, I know cups is always running. Cups D, we want to turn off cups D. Cups is the common Unix printing system. It's what allows your machine to use network printers. It's very useful, but it opens a bunch of ports and I don't like seeing it. And I hate that it's installed and running on Ubuntu without uh, my permission even though I know that for mainstream users, that's kind of useful. I can do, remember sudo if you're going to be uh, affecting processes that don't belong to you, so you need to be root. So sudo kill all processes started by cups D. And you can see it has either, it's very strange, It's cups D twenty seven ninety four. Okay, it just restarts itself. That's what's going on. Wonderful. Uh, anyway, so generally you can kill all processes by a name using kill all, and then really useful if you want to, for example, kill all processes running as Dave. <laughs> I'm actually going to do this because this is a virtual machine. Uh, you can do. pkill with user Dave. So this will kill all of Dave's processes. I'm logged in as Dave, so this is going to be an interesting thing. But uh, you can take a look. Um, pgrep and pkill, you can find processes based. Uh, it's just a little more fine-grained than like kill all. Uh, there you go. That's a really useful overview of just sending signals to processes and killing them. Again, uh, There you go. So here you can see if you do man7 signal, you'll see a lot of the system calls and a lot of the things. I think it even has a listing of all the signals. There you go. So the value, so this is you would type kill and then this value and then the signal to send whatever the signal is. And I would just take a look at these. You can see a signal stop. We're going to talk about these, I think, and continue. So you can basically put, put a process to sleep or on hold and then resume it. And then you can see here, like, like we talked about, stops and kills can't be there. They're the kernel doing it to the process. So the process can't block or handle that itself. So those are a surefire way of getting those things stopped or killed. Good. So that gives you the basic tools for dealing with processes and sending signals.